All right, so uh, now uh, we're starting a series of talks that are about devices. Uh, and so this first one is uh, the, kind of the highest level talk, and then I'll be drilling down and down and down. So uh, please welcome Alan Jude. Thank you. Uh, so last year at the Dev Summit here, uh, a bunch of us went in that little office over there and sketched up some ideas on how to do uh, per BDEV properties so that you could have uh, more control over the system and be able to get more information out programmatically. Uh, and you know, one of our goals was you know, some way to look at the, the data you get from Z full status, but that you could you know, read with a script instead of uh, with your human eyeballs. Uh, but also trying to move towards more of the system-wide tunables becoming per pool or even per device. Uh, and so I thought I'd talk a little bit about that. Uh, so right now, ZFS makes it really easy to configure your storage since almost every object in ZFS has properties, right? Whether it's the pool itself or a data set or snapshots or whatever, they have properties that you can set uh, to control how they're going to be used and even user properties that you can just put arbitrary configuration information for your application or appliance into it. Uh, and that works very well, but we didn't have that for disks, and that's what I want. Uh, so I wanted to extend the concept to have per Vita properties, and like I said, make more of the tunables that we have uh, that are currently system-wide be per pool or per Vita, because uh, you know, some of our customers have multiple pools, and one of them is actually based on devices that are not in the same place. Uh, and so you know, they experience much different latency uh, than the regular pool that they're booting off of, and they might need different settings for those. Uh, so yeah, my motivation was I wanted to be able to do things like uh, Z pool status. You have those checksum and read and write error counts, but there's not an easy way to extract that information uh, to put it into your monitoring to have graphs or whatever. Your Z pool status is, is meant for humans, not for machines. Uh, or you know, you can get a list of the individual disks in some level of the hierarchy by running Z pool list dash V, but the columns are meant for pools, not disks. So a lot of the columns are blank and it doesn't really match, right? Uh, and I also wanted ways to express administrative intent. Uh, when we talked last year, we had ideas like with device removal, if you're going to do two device removals, you can only do one at a time, you probably want to say, this other device I'm going to remove, but I'm not removing yet, please don't keep writing to it as I'm moving data off this other one, because then I'm just going to have to indirect it twice. Uh, so being able to do something like set no alloc on, on VDEV3, and then you know that the allocator is going to avoid making new allocations to that VDEV, so that when your first remove completes, you can go do the second one, and it hasn't gained any new data in the meantime. Uh, and also, uh, with the special VDEV class stuff that uh, was done, um, I think most of the control you have there about what types of blocks get sent where is kind of generic. So if you have three special VDEVs, they all get the same stuff instead of being able to say, I want this disk to have the DDoP table, and this one just have metadata, and this one's just for small blocks. Uh, and so it seemed to be the easiest way and the way that fit best into the way you configure everything else in ZFS would be to have these per VDEV properties. Uh, luckily, when Matt and the uh, people at Delphix did the device evacuation work, they had to add a per VDEV zap to keep track of status, uh, uh, how far through the scanning process they were and so on. Uh, so I could just glom onto that, all the code to make sure the zap gets allocated and dealing with upgrading pools that didn't have one and so on was all there for me, so that made it much easier. Uh, and so that meant now every VDEV already has this handy zap key value store that I can just use. Uh, uh, and it applies both to top level VDEVs and, and transformation classes like a RAID Z and the actual leaf VDEVs themselves. Uh, so the first step I did was adding a whole bunch of read only properties. So basically exposing a lot of the um, interesting fields from VDEV T and VDEV stats T uh, as read only properties. Uh, so currently, in the implementation I have, uh, there are two types of properties. There are system properties, which are actually declared in an enum, uh, and those are uh, can either be an integer, uh, an index, so you know they have a, a table of what the values can be, uh, or a string, 
And then user properties, which are always a string and just get stored in the zap. Uh, and then the system properties, it depends. They're usually stored in the zap as the integer or the string. Uh, or some of them are read-only, so we don't have to store them. Uh, and then the user properties are namespaced the same way we do user properties on uh, data sets, uh, so that people don't get in each other's face. Uh, and they work very similar. Uh, so originally, when uh, we started talking about this last year, I was aiming at some kind of interface where you do like zpool get the property at the vdev and then the pool or something. Uh, but I think it was uh, Brian Bellendorf pointed out that uh, as part of the work the ZFS and Linux people had done for zpool iostat, uh, they had a function where when you list multiple uh, pools after iostat, it could actually look at that list and tell oh, some of these are actually VDEV names rather than pool names, uh, and be able to filter down the output of IOSTAT to show just those disks out of the pool instead of all of them, which is super handy when you have 144 disks in your pool <laughs> and you only care about these six. Uh, but I was able to take that code and generalize it uh, so that you can have this nicer interface of zpool get, the property, the name of the pool, uh, and then a list of VDEVs, and it will get that property from that list of VDEVs. Uh, or there's the keyword all, which will find every uh, VDEV in that pool. Uh, and it inherits all the goodness of the zpool get interface. So you can have uh, capital H to make scriptable mode so that it gets rid of the header and the fields are separated, are separated by hard tab instead of human, uh, you know, pretty printed. Uh, parsable so that you get numbers in you know, bytes instead of terabytes or whatever. Uh, or even using dash O to select which columns from the results you want. Because maybe you don't care about the source of the, the parameters or whatever. Uh, so in this example pool, I specifically have a device that's missing, but you can still read the, the zap because it's uh, metadata stored in multiple copies. Uh, I have a very strange pool here with a single device and then a mirror, and half the mirror is missing or whatever. Uh, but you can say, uh, zpool get the state of the VDEV, the fragmentation level, who its parent is, and how many read errors it has for these two disks in my pool, and you get the output. Uh, and you can see that uh, the ADA0 device is parent of the pool, so it's a, a stripe basically, it's a top level VDEV, whereas ADA1 is part of mirror one. Uh, and you see the fragmentation levels, and that neither of them have any read errors right now. Uh, and then I have a giant list of properties that are available now. Uh, most of these are all read-only. Uh, you can get the name of the VDEV or the, how big it is in the state and all that kind of stuff. Uh, or you can set a comment on each VDEV so that you can keep track of what it is or whatever. Um, I found that on FreeBSD, there are ioctals to set the FRU, but there's no user space interface to do it. <laughs> uh, but in conversations, uh, we've talked about the idea of actually maybe having the serial number and the model number of the disk persisted in the zap so that when a disk has failed, you can tell what its serial number was and what its uh, part number was so that you can replace it even when that disk is not online anymore. Uh, and interesting oh. things like that. Uh, and I also, from the VDEV stats team, got all the counters so we in addition to the error counts you get from zpool status, you can also see how many IOPS of each type and how many bytes uh, have been read and written and trimmed and so on from each device, uh, which again can let feed into your monitoring so that you can actually graph how busy each disk is by just comparing those numbers over time. Uh, although we have wondered a bit about uh, for things like the byte, uh, tracking how many bytes have been written to an SSD, maybe we want to persist those numbers, but how do we do that without you know, writing to the disk too frequently. Uh, and I'm very interested in what other properties people would like to see. Mostly right now it's just the stuff ZFS knows about the VDEV uh, and you can set user properties to do whatever you want with. Uh, like one idea we're looking at for FreeBSD is for our fault management daemon, being able to put information like how should this disk be partitioned uh, or how was it partitioned so that when we replace it, we can uh, apply the same partitioning scheme again. Because uh, on FreeBSD, we use raw swap rather than uh, swap on a Z ball or whatever. Uh, and depending if it's a boot pool, it, it needs to have the boot code and know to rewrite that when you replace a disk and things like that. 
Um, then I had some other ideas. Uh, I was questioned about some properties that are actually to the Z tool, not the VDEV, uh, but kind of fit with the, the work I was doing. Like you can't actually get the uh, those first couple lines from Z tool status about you know uh, is the you know when was the last scrub done or uh, if it's currently you know waiting for a trim to finish or whatever. Uh, should we expose those as individual properties as well? Uh, and at what point do we have we made too many properties? And do we need to at some point have a, a subset where you do you know Z pool get all? It only displays most of the the stats, and you know you have to say set of us get debug or something if you want the the really gory ones. Uh, or do we just make them hidden and you have to specify them explicitly uh, to make them show up? But at what point is do we have too many properties? Uh, you know, you can never have too much information, but we don't want to make just running Zpool get all just scroll forever and, and be full of probably not that useful information. Uh, so yeah, maybe we need Zpool get everything or something like that to be like, no, I want I want the whole fire hose. Uh, but also would like to get. Uh, Channel programs for this, uh, especially if you're going to go and set properties on all of your VDEVs, you probably want to not have to wait a long time for each of those to flush. You can do them all and then flush them out at once, kind of thing. Um, currently, if you are looking at pool properties, when you open a handle in libzfs uh, to the pool, it gets all the properties once and then has those in that handle. Uh, so you don't have to do an IOCTO for every pool property when you're trying to do stuff with it. Uh, currently, for the VDEV properties, we don't do any caching at all. Uh, probably OK, because they're not really meant to be used that way. But maybe we need something. And then I know when we talked originally, we kind of had the question of, do we need inheritance or not? And what makes sense there? And most of the properties, maybe it doesn't make sense. But some of them, maybe it does. Uh, we may have to decide what to do there. And like I said, the uh, persistent counters, do we have, is it valuable to persist some of those numbers? And if so, how do we do it in a way that we're not going to cause a lot more writes to the disk for no reason, just to keep track of these performance counters or whatever? Questions? I'm a big fan of the unification. Also, this is awesome. Uh, definitely want to vote up for the serial number storage, for sure. And have you thought of including um, smart control testing as a property for the devices? So basically tying in the smart control system allowing for that testing and also storing the results. Of I hadn't thought of storing the results. Uh, we looked at, uh, Chuck has written a, a BSD licensed smart replacement that could, is small enough that it could be just a contrib piece of ZFS or something. Uh, or it just in general is, uh, BSD license, so it can be used everywhere instead of GPL license, where it can't be used everywhere. Um, uh, so yeah, some smart stuff. Uh, we've thought about that being interesting. Uh, I hadn't thought of actually trying to store reports over time. I don't. Well, I Does that hold? Yeah, I don't know if you want to say, but but yeah, maybe the last one makes sense or something. But uh, yeah, we've thought about that and looking at uh, getting more information uh, on the FreeBSD side about like. Which HBA is this disk attached to, uh, and and stuff like that? Um, you mentioned like getting all the stuff. If, if I know the exact key of a for a VDEV test, you know, mm -hmm. you just let me type in that key, and then you get that from without polluting the names with that. But right. Yeah. That's, uh, so cool. we mark the properties as hidden. Then they only show up if you do Z pool get that name or include that in the common separate <laughs> list. Whereas when you do all, it doesn't show up. Yeah. Uh, if I had a key later. Like I'd be able to read it without you knowing about it. Right. So I guess have you thought? Uh, I mean, you mentioned having additional things for FreeBSD, having sort of a pluggable interface where you can, you know, add your own uh, things that you want to be able to get. Uh, so, for instance, you want to get the HBA. Um, I see this is something which could be generated as a script, where you would provide, let's say, the physical path of the video is provided by CFS. Yeah, as part of the script, and then it runs and generates the information you would get. Um, Possibly, yeah, because uh, yeah, the the physical path is one of the uh, the properties that we do have to uh, physical path. Right. Uh, 
And yes, for some of those, it might make sense to do that. Uh, or, you know, uh, in the case of FreeBSD, we we're looking at providing that with uh, GEOM, which is the, the layer that sits under uh, VDEV underscore disk. Uh, and so, yeah, we probably wouldn't actually uh, do that as a pool property so much as just some other way to get it, like right. you're saying. Because, uh, yes, yeah, the, the idea with this would be to try to keep uh, the defined properties common across all the platforms. Right. And then we can have the namespace properties for local stuff. So if FreeBSD is going to have FreeBSD only properties, they'd be org.freebsd colon uh, the property name. And so it would be obvious that that's not something you would expect to work anywhere else. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and then, yeah, with the user properties, you can do whatever you want. You know, Delphix could have Delphix specific things they want to persist to the disk. Uh, you know, I have plans for that. And that type of thing as well. Something like the agencies for VPT, we already have them. Uh, like Zpool IOSTAT has a latency yeah. histogram and stuff. Right, right. Uh, you can, if, I think if you do dash V, it breaks it down per disk. Oh, I see. Uh, is read only the same as the dollar? I think you had it earlier slide. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because, yeah, you couldn't really do it the other way. Uh, or maybe, we thought maybe, but yeah, I think it. it Basically, it'll be the same thing. Uh, but you know, what other actually writable properties do people think would be useful? Like we had the ideas of doing some of the ones for the special VDEV classes, uh, and no Alec for being able to queue stuff or just other things like that. Uh, the other one we thought about was um, a mirror bias. So uh, sometimes you have a mirror where one disk is local and one's not, and you want to say do almost all of the reads or all of the reads off uh, the local mirror unless that disk has gone away. How about uh, set control operators? Hmm? Uh, set the software uh, to drive operators. The piece storage. Yeah. Maybe. Huh? Uh, just for write proper, read write properties, you can send the scanning to the bullet set there. Because there yeah. are some things that are like, uh, you know, that uh, affect how, like, you know, if you're reslogging it in the drive, um, that might be very harsh for that top level media, then you might want to flip it, you know, it back. Yeah, uh, the, the very original idea I had for this was being to make most of the mm -hmm. uh, the VDEV queuing stuff per pop, top level VDEV. Uh, and that was what we, most of what we worked on last time. Uh, I'd be interested in this. How about some properties to? Tune the trimming, like say, always trim this device even if the driver claims it can't do it, or don't trim this device. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely See, thought have, of that yesterday. You can like, have all your SSDs. I just don't really want those trimmed. Now, granted, the interface supports the, the interface does equal trim does support specifying V devs, but maybe you just never yeah, want to get. I want trim. I want auto trim on for the whole pool. Yeah, or auto but trim. But I. This one SSD has failed, right. and I've replaced it with a SATA one temporarily. Well, right. I wait for the right. SAS replacement, like and I would like to so just like not that. try to trim that because it's going to slow everything down. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question. Um, you were talking about persisting the IOP and the error counts, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if that might be able to piggyback onto the uh, the ZIO prioritization of the trims, where the trims never trigger uh, a transaction group. Yeah. If you could pipeline them in the same way so that they're just there until another write. Yeah, through. and when the pool's idle, they don't happen, things like that. Yeah, yeah that might be an interesting way to do it.